Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. And a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon for your contributions to my channel. In this video, we're going to be doing an overview of cholesterol biosynthesis and look at the lipoproteins from the liver that can come from that, like VLDL, LDL, and HDL. So here is the liver, and the liver is the primary site of cholesterol biosynthesis. Now remember that there are two sources of cholesterol for humans. One is de novo synthesis, and de novo means from scratch, so basically making it from scratch with our own enzymes, that's the biosynthetic pathway here, we can also get it through the diet. And the numbers that you'll see are different per textbook or per source, but approximately 75 to 85% of cholesterol is actually made biosynthetically. Only about 15 to 25% is actually obtained through the diet, and there's a lot of factors that can change those percentages, but those are the averages. So most is actually made via this biosynthetic pathway. And so if alterations in diet and exercise fail, which unfortunately they do in a lot of people, then pharmacologically speaking, the cholesterol biosynthetic pathway is a prime target for therapy to try to reduce the output of things like LDL. And we'll talk about that in a few minutes. So now let's take a brief simplified look at the cholesterol biosynthetic pathway. Cholesterol, recall, comes from the central coenzyme acetyl-CoA. And in fact, to make one molecule of cholesterol, it actually requires 15 molecules of acetyl-CoA. That's a lot of energy to make one molecule of cholesterol. And the fact that we make about 75 to 85 percent of our total cholesterol should tell you how important it actually is for normal function. Now through a multi-step uh, pathway, it's actually just two enzymes here, we actually get this molecule called HMG-CoA, so hydroxymethylglutaryl-CoA. Now depending on the state of the body, HMG-CoA can undergo one of two reactions in the liver. The first is HMG-CoA lyase. This will actually cleave HMG-CoA into acetoacetate. This reaction occurs predominantly when the body is in a fasted or starving state, which most Americans are not in very often. But when this occurs, we get acetoacetate. And then there's another couple of enzymes here. The first is acetoacetate dehydrogenase which may convert acetoacetate into beta-hydroxybutyrate. And there's another reaction here that can occur spontaneously or with a decarboxylase enzyme, where acetoacetate can be converted into acetone. The acetoacetate, the beta-hydroxybutyrate, and acetone are your three ketone bodies. This is what becomes elevated in diabetics, but also during a fasted state, when the peripheral cells like those of the brain, heart, and muscle need energy, the liver can actually take some of this HMG-CoA and manufacture ketone bodies, which are then moved into the blood, and they distribute to the various tissues. But in a fed state or postprandial state, which unfortunately Americans are in a lot of the time, HMG-CoA will react with HMG-CoA reductase. And then through a multi-step pathway, we get cholesterol. And when I say multi-step, it's like 30 enzymes. It's a huge, long pathway. And this HMG-CoA reductase is really the committed and rate-limiting step of the entire pathway. And so this would be a prime target for pharmacological treatment. And we'll actually see that there's a class of drugs called statins in a few minutes that actually inhibit this enzyme. And then the cholesterol here can be distributed to various parts of the body. For example, other cells are going to need cholesterol in their plasma membranes, or the adrenal cortex and testes and ovaries will need this to make the steroids like testosterone, estradiol, cortisol, and so forth. But in order to get cholesterol to those tissues, the cholesterol has to be packaged up into lipoproteins. Now, here's the important thing. The liver does not just output LDL. Okay. You can see it makes a precursor type of lipoprotein called VLDL. This is a very low density lipoprotein. It's made in the liver and then moved into the blood. Only later in the pathway do we actually get the LDL, as you can see right here, and that's what we're going to look at now. So once the cholesterol has been packaged into VLDL, the VLDL is output into the blood and it circulates around the vasculature throughout the body. And the purpose of VLDL is actually to distribute free fatty acids. So the VLDL does contain cholesterol, but it also contains these free fatty acids which are packaged and stored as triglycerides within the VLDL. And being a triglyceride, we have to break it down with a lipase first to get those free fatty acids. And so when the VLDL is circulating and it 
reaches any one of these cells. These cells contain proteins on their plasma membranes that activate lipoprotein lipase. And then the lipoprotein lipase will then clip up those triglycerides into free fatty acids and it will deliver them to muscle or to adipocytes or to any cell you could possibly think of that can use fatty acids. The heart, it could be a glial cell, a neuron, anything. Okay. Now once the VLDL has given up sufficient free fatty acids and its triglycerides have been broken down, it's now given a new name. It's called intermediate density lipoprotein or IDL. Now the IDL here is going to circulate back to the liver. I don't have the liver shown right here, but at the liver there's an enzyme called hepatic lipase and the hepatic lipase is going to transform the IDL or intermediate density lipoprotein into LDL, which is the low density lipoprotein. So again, the point here is that the liver does not directly output LDL. It outputs VLDL and then there's a variety of changes that have to occur before we actually get that LDL. And so the LDL is what's responsible for this cholesterol delivery to all these cells, like skeletal muscle. We have the same cells from before. We have adipocytes. Any cell that requires cholesterol in its plasma membrane, which is basically all cells, right? And on the membrane of these cells, they have LDL receptors. That's what this LDL-R is, an LDL receptor. And so the LDL is going to bind to that receptor, and through a process called receptor-mediated endocytosis, the entire LDL particle is pulled into those cells. Okay? So LDL doesn't just drop off free fatty acids like the VLDL does here the entire LDL lipoprotein is pulled into that cell and it can then use the entire content of the lipoprotein. So these phospholipids that make up the lipoprotein, it can use those. The amino acids from the proteins within it, it can use those. The cell can basically use anything, including the cholesterol that this LDL has, okay? And that's receptor-mediated endocytosis. Now, is all of this LDL gonna be taken up no, some fraction of it will be taken up into those peripheral cells, but some of it will not. And the fraction of it that's not taken up will simply go back to the liver. And the liver also has these LDL receptors. And so when the LDL binds to those receptors again, the LDL is taken up into the liver and the liver then deals with it. Okay, so any LDL that's not taken up by peripheral cells simply goes back to the liver and does so also through an endocytosis process. Now, this process of cholesterol delivery is not perfect because, as you can see here, some of that cholesterol may actually leak into the vasculature and potentially cause problems. It's kind of like if you're doing yard work and you have a bucket and you fill it with water from the hose and you have to then carry that bucket across the yard. Some of that water, inevitably, unless you're just really good at it, is going to spill, right? Not a lot, but some of it will spill. It's kind of the same thing here. And so to deal with that cholesterol, that quote unquote, spills out, we have HDL. So this is another type of lipoprotein that performs what we call reverse cholesterol transport. So VLDL and LDL basically take it out to the periphery, but then HDL moves out of the liver and goes into the periphery and basically with this little hand here picks up that cholesterol and then brings it back to the liver. So in some ways you could think of HDL as a cholesterol scavenger. And so normally if we have high levels of HDL, that's associated with lower risk for cardiovascular disease, heart attack, stroke, all that kind of stuff, because it's going into the periphery and picking up that excess cholesterol and then bringing it back. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.